Hi kids, this is your superpower kid, Neva Lee Rekla. And today we have on our show a very amazing guest, Michelle Weinstein. So Michelle and I met at New Media Summit and she has over 20 years of sales experience. She, yes. And she's the founder of Pitch Queen and she's amazing. And today we'll be talking with Michelle about Pitch Like a Woman. So without further ado, we hope we welcome our very amazing guest and one of my good friends, Michelle Weinstein. Hi, Michelle. Thank hi. Thank you, Neva, for having me. And Thank hi, kiddos. So, much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle, what are your superpowers? Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. I feel like each of us has so many unique superpowers. Oh, right. I think one of my superpowers that I've developed when I got older is learning like how to listen Ooh, and yeah, learning really, superpower. really learning how to listen to people because I feel like, you know, when you're younger, it might not, well, I'm sure you've hung around a lot of us. It's, people aren't ever heard, you yeah. know, exactly. and, and I think if we could all listen just a little bit more, everyone would be in a happier place. So, yeah, so for me, I feel like my superpower in this day and age is definitely how to listen more and how to listen really well and listen to what's important to the other person. Because That's what's awesome. important to me and what's important to you are different. And I remember you, I think you have a similar superpower because you heard I like cookies and that one day when we met, you got me cookies, but I had to leave that weekend. Um, yeah. So, so you listen pretty well too. I do. Especially when it comes to desserts. People the dessert. don't get their dessert, not going to be a good day. <laughs> I agree. So, I definitely like my sweets yeah. too. <laughs> How did you get the idea for Pitch Queen? So the Pitch Queen was born because when I was about your age, I, you know, thought I wanted to do lemonade stands and I sold candy in high school and I was always trying to make money. And what I learned over the years was that I had another superpower, it's more broad one, where I, I, I'm really good at sales and I don't really let other people affect me. And I don't allow other people to determine, you know, if I'd said something wrong or right or whatever it yeah. may be. And I think a lot of times in sales or like, you know, with you and raising money for your book, we, we get told no and we get rejected all the time, but I just see it as like another opportunity. So I'm on a mission to help entrepreneurs that sell higher dollar services. So something of maybe $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 awesome. of value have a lot of confidence in their sales conversations because the number one reason I think people don't do a great job at sales is because they're not really good listeners <laughs> and they just want to get to the chase, right? They're, yeah, they want to do like, their business. Get to the money. Yeah, get to the money where really if you just help more people and do exactly. what you're really great at, the money will just follow. And they want the money, but they don't want to work for the money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, I teach through the podcast that I actually had you on success unfiltered. So we talk yeah. about no's and rejections and how do you break through them and get past them? And how did other really successful entrepreneurs get past those no's and rejections to get to where yeah. they're at? Yeah. So why do a lot of entrepreneurs have the fear of selling? Like they don't want to sell. Yeah. I think the that people don't like that word, right? If it's from, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to the mall. But if you go to the mall and they have all yeah. those kiosks and then people are like, oh, can I curl your hair? Oh, do you want to try this lotion or oh, this or oh, that, you know, and it's like just like, no, 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 don't bother me. Or when you go to the car dealership and Cause people, they're afraid to say no, to get said no. That's right. Not a well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think people just find sales really pushy really kind of sleazy and not maybe call it growth. making business instead of yeah, exactly I just call it helping people but helping as people. entrepreneurs Help you know like uh, I met a girl and she's a baker right and a baker doesn't want to work for a bakery she wants to start her own bakery well when she starts her own bakery she forgot and didn't even know that she signed up for a 24 7 sales career because every time someone comes in your bakery you actually have to 
present your products in a way where people yes, you'd be like, do you want to try these muffins? Do right. you want to try this bread? Do you want to try this cake? Yeah. You know? Oh, and do you want to buy a loaf of bread? And by the way, you'll get two muffins free and a cookie for, re- you know, a cookie for me and a cookie for Neva. So, um, you know, you have to, that's an upsell. Like exactly. people, bakers weren't taught that in baking school. So I think they a lot have of to us, learn it. they have to learn it. Right. And that's mm-hmm. the point is that there's no one really teaching in MBA programs and business school and undergrad. I never learned sales in college. Mm-hmm. I learned it at having sales jobs and going yeah. to trainings and having different sales trainings. And I worked at a company called Nordstrom and they did training. So, you know, all of these experiences I bundled up and took my 20 years of experience to help entrepreneurs really get over the nose and get over the rejections. That's awesome. So I have, as you said before, I'm writing a book. It's called Win Fix Fly, The Parent's Guide to Inspire Young Entrepreneurs. And I've been getting sponsors. What advice do you have for me on how I can get more and more sponsors? Well, <laughs> you're, you're so, you, it seems like you've already been to sales school. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think the best way to do it, honestly, is for you to ask for referrals. Because I know you go to a lot of events right? And at all the events, the best way is to maybe tighten up what you just said. So you have your book and what it's for, and maybe like one or two sentences about how it will help the parents of the kids, right? Yeah. And then say, do you know somebody or have a referral of someone that might want to sponsor this book that would help change a lot of lives of the parent and the kid relationship? right? That's awesome. Yeah. For the kids. So there's a certain way that you can practice it and do that. But think about it. If you ask for a referral, sometimes that person might just say, you know what? Well, I want to sponsor you, Mm -hmm. but you're not asking them directly. You're actually just asking them if they know somebody else that they could introduce you to. And then once they get and build the connection and know that you're not asking for anything from them, they're like, oh, well, I can do that. I can do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Something my parents taught me to say is, what card would you like to use? So. Oh, what credit card? (laughs) Yeah. um, So so there's a better way to ask that. It's which credit card would you like to use? Visa or American Express? So you actually uh, give them a choice. Because if you you ask what credit card do you want to use, then it's an open-ended like, oh, well, on that question, maybe you actually want to give them a this or that option. Do you want to use this visa or do you want to use that American Express? Mm-hmm. Um, and something, my dad and I went to a business event. Yeah. And he said, what's your favorite question to ask? And I said, what card would you like to use? <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, if you get used to asking people what's their favorite credit card to use or, Mm -hmm. you know, which would you prefer? Would you like to use your American Express card or your Visa card? Exactly. Because then it it gets a little bit more specific. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually need to take a quick break. But really fast, where can people go to find out more about you? The best place to go is thepitchqueen.com. Pitchqueen.com. Go check it out. She's awesome. (laughs) Awesome. So we've been talking with Michelle Weinstein about Pitch Like a Woman. We'll be right back. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer learning, intensive one-on-one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Okay, we're back and we've been talking with Michelle Weinstein about Pitch Like a Woman. Um, so actually, we, um, we need to do a few questions and then funny FaceTime. Okay. Okay. So what were you like as a kid? 
Um, as a kid, I, I figure skated a lot. So I had a pretty disciplined life because I think my mom wanted me to be like Dorothy Hamill. So I grew up in Minnesota and I would go figure skating before school and I was figure skating after school. And What's figure I, skating? Ice skating. Oh. Ice skating. Yeah. So you know where you skate and you wear like that outfit and little skirt and the white, white skates? That was yeah, me. I tried that, but I was like more wearing pants, 20 pairs of pants. So 20 pairs of pants because it's freezing. Yeah, and then anytime I fell, it was really annoying because I didn't have clothes. So it was like... Yeah. And then like everyone's flying past you and you're like... <laughs> and then my siblings, they just... they, My mom, my sister, and my dad, they realized that maybe I was better off trying it on my own. Uh, so they just all skated on their own. I was like, and I yeah. them and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but I finally got decent. Yeah. So decent. I, I was the figure skater. That's awesome. And um, I had a pretty, you know, that was like my childhood. And then uh, when I was going into middle school, I, our, my family moved to Arizona where you live. And I, I, I was like on a permanent vacation because I, in Minnesota, it snowed a lot. And guess what? Ever since I had moved to Arizona when I was in middle school, I never went back to Minnesota. It's too cold. Like I literally rather wear jacket. People say like, Michelle, why are you in a jacket all the time? Because I'm always just cold. So <laughs> yeah, me at night, I wear regular clothes, like a shirt and pants. Then I have a hoodie that I put on. And I have a onesie. <laughs> I turn on the fan because I read at night. And then when I go to bed, I turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so that, that really was cold. me as a kid. I was all into the ice skating. All yeah, that's, cool. that's awesome. So um, you said earlier that you like when, like to sell lemonade and stuff when you were a kid. But when did you – what age were you when you, like, started do, working up to sales? You know, I think it really, really started when I was in high school. So at my high school, we, you know, I, there were these, um, I don't know if you've ever had a fun dip, but it was like powder and the stick and then you oh, like yeah. Those lick are so the good. stick and dump it, dunk it in the fun, right? So, They're so I, I would sell that in school. And then I was also lifeguard and mm. I started lifeguarding at 16. It was like my first wow. real job at the YMCA and I started teaching, um, swimming classes to kids. But you know, in Arizona, everyone has a pool in their backyard. So I got really everyone, <laughs> everyone. So I said, you know what, I could make a lot more money just going to people's houses to teach swimming classes than just doing it, you know, at the YMCA yeah. where I think I was getting like $7 an hour, $6 an hour yeah. back in the day. That was exactly. Minimum wage. So <laughs> that's when I started uh, really you know, having that entrepreneurial spirit and figuring out how am I going to have my own businesses. So that's when it all started when I was nice. 16 in high school. I remember when I was a baby, I started, I was learning how to like float on my back and stuff. So yeah, I like to play a game where I go under and my stomach touches. The, I do that. Ground. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll be swimming. Oh, and I'll decide I need to work out. So I, I swim, I do brush stroke, I do backstroke, I do regular swim, I go under, nice. and I do a workout, and then at night, we go in the hot tub. Nice, yeah. Because it does get pretty cold out here in the hot tub. It does, but, yeah. yeah. So I, I spend a lot of time in the sun and in the pool between yeah. the age of like 16 and mid-20s. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what advice do you have? Um, to help kids that want to learn how to start sell selling, like if it's like the simplest thing. Yeah, I definitely think like lemonade stands are a great yeah. way making yourself unique, like maybe bake some cookies or do yeah, some other yeah. things. Um, I think anything door to door, as long as you're going around with your parents is a great way too, because a lot of people that I interview said that actually going door to door and doing some sales stuff that way is the most mm -hmm. difficult way to learn how to really sell yourself and actually get someone to talk to you. That's exactly. a stranger. Like um, you could 
You could make mm-hmm. bracelets and sell them at your I you love know, bracelets. The park. Yeah, like what if you made those and you just went to your park on the weekends when it's super busy and then all the kids want bracelets and then all the parents start buying it for the kids, right? Yep. Or so, the kids have pocket money and what I say when it comes to kids, I know that kids normally don't have a lot of money, so I say 25 cents. Yeah, 25 cents, but at least you get cents. practice at making a product or, you know, unless you exactly. have a service, like I had a service teaching swim classes, mm-hmm. but maybe it's like you do what you love and making bracelets. Or I was maybe like about to say that. Yeah. Make something that you love to do in your fun time and then just go and sell it and see if other kids like it. Or you could, if go you ahead. live in Arizona, um, come to my house. And if you like making slime and squishies, come to my house. I will buy all of them from you. <laughs> all my slime. friends have slime and squishies, but I, I don't. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, I haven't I, made slime. So. Oh, yeah. I've never made slime and squishies, but I used to make the um, the bracelets with the like the skinny fabric, and I would sell those, too. Ooh, I don't remember what cool. they were called. Yeah, and I would, you know, do it in my free time. One uh, of my really good friends, Sophie, made me this one. Yeah, those are great. But what if you... What if you made a whole bunch of those and went to the park and sold them? That's yeah. a great way to practice sales right now. Exactly. Each of you can do it right now. Exactly. Or one of the kids I know, he does like, um, you could have people like help you. Like you're donating to like a charity or something. Like one of, the, one of my friends, he makes like goodie bags for homeless people that yeah. have like money, good aid, um, first aid kits and stuff. And he goes around handing them out. Um, and we actually had backpacks at a time that my dad, he works with a project called Lucius Dollar uh-huh. and they got backpacks for homeless people that have, I think 200, around 200 items in there, nice. so they have, like packets, water, snacks, first aid kits and everything. And we handed out, um, we got four and we handed out all of them to, um, nice. A lot of homeless people. So it was amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, you could even do that and sell those at the park yeah. for the families that want to donate or don't even sell them. Just ask for donations and then take your parents to the homeless places and just give out the backpacks. Exactly. But you got to put them together and you just got basically like what you're doing, sponsors for your book. You could get sponsors for your backpacks. Exactly. So I think we actually need to do... Funny FaceTime. Okay. Are you ready? Make your funny face in three, two, one. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So we also need to do Super Neva questions. Okay. Answer these questions as fast as possible. Okay. All super right. Neva questions. I am ready. Ready, set, go. What's your favorite color? Pink. What's your favorite animal? A uh, French bulldog. Ooh. If you could live anywhere in the world besides where you live now, where would it be? Mexico. Why? Mexico. Um, <laughs> if, what would you say to kids that came to you for advice or maybe even adults that are being bullied and need help? Stand up for yourself and go seek somebody to talk to immediately. Because if you don't talk to somebody, that's when it just gets worse. You're going to store it all up and then... You're going to store it all up and then... Meet that person up. they've already forgot about it. And then exactly. Like, what the heck's wrong with you? You didn't... For- exactly. You forgot that you bullied me when we were a kid, you know? Yeah. You um, need to get it out ASAP in a safe place. Exactly. ASAP in a safe place. <laughs> um, would you rather live in a real working hot shop? Hot tub, hot tub full of hot fudge, or um, or a giant pool full of marshmallows. These big. I would prefer the um hot fudge. I like chocolate. Really, living in it. Yep, I would live in a hot tub full of fudge over marshmallows any day because I probably could live off the chocolate and the calories. Nice. <laughs> I mean, you would have a mini fridge with actual food and like. Supply oh, you stuff. would? Oh, I thought we're talking like survivor style. Um, oh, I meant like you could have like a mini fridge and stuff. But I would, you would still have to make a the hot tub with chocolate. I would make 
I would like carve holes in like the uh, marshmallows and make like my bed and a chair and TV. I'm gonna make marshmallows. <laughs> um, I just got done interviewing Rachel McCord, mm-hmm. and we're, she's a supermodel, and we're we're gonna make giant marshmallows. That's awesome. And then we're gonna have someone build a giant pool from her house to mine. Okay. And so we'll fill them so up with giant marshmallows. You're gonna need to let me know when the invitation for the party is for your housewarming. Probably. I'd like to come. Actually. My sister and I are building a house. Um, her boyfriend's helping us. It's going to be a giant castle made out of um, boxes. Nice. So it's going to have like a drawbridge and everything. And it's nice. going to be of the lock. And then the we, we have a passcode for people to get in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it. then if you don't get it, um, everyone has to come in at the same time. Like, not at the same time, so one person individually. Because they could say the actual answer, and then you let them in, and then someone could be like, that one. I'm like, no, you can't come in, you know? (laughs) Yeah, so you'll have your code and your bridge, and no one will be able to sneak in. (laughs) Exactly. Um, If you could be any inanimate object, what would it be? Hmm. Does a bottle of wine count? Yeah. Perfect. Or a piece of chocolate. Piece of chocolate. Piece of chocolate. Piece I would be um I'd be a Hershey bar. Ooh, those are good. I would probably be milk. And I, and then they would go house. on your marshmallows and then we'd make s'mores at your house. <laughs> we need giant graham crackers too. Yes, we need giant graham crackers. Oh, the heaven. <laughs> um would you rather have a pet monkey or a pet squirrel? I rather have a pet monkey. Me too. Yeah. They're so cute. They're but, cute and I feel like you could eventually train them. Okay. You know? But you have to make sure that they don't do anything weird with their diapers. True. <sighs> yeah. I've seen it before. Uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have a pet snake or it would be a non-venomous, but still, they're kind of cute, mm. but then they're kind of creepy. Um, no, no snakes or lizard for me, Neva. No lizards? Mm-hmm. One of my no friends liz- has a bearded dragon, and he's so cute. N- no snakes, no lizards, no. I, I don't really care for the desert animals. Those are all the animals that you guys have out there. <laughs> but you have to choose anyway. A okay. pet crocodile or a pet rattlesnake? Oh, gosh. I have to pick crocodile. Yeah. I would be a baby crocodile, and then I would make it live in my pool, and then I would make my dog a yard inside, and then I would say, <laughs> nobody go out there. <laughs> There's something out there you don't want to see. Nice. Or you don't want to be near, because I'm not training it. Yeah. Um, would you rather be a gorilla, a gorilla, a gorilla or a chimpanzee? A chimpanzee. Ooh. Huh. Would you rather swing from vines and live on trees, live in trees, or, or live in the world's smallest house? I rather swing on trees and have unlimited freedom. Yeah. But then there's no Wi Fi. Oh, there was Wi Fi in the house? Well, oh, what, yeah. what would I be? Would I be a human? Yeah, you get to be a human. Um, I would choose the trees because the Wi Fi could go out, or if you're swinging on a tree, you could swing in front of a tree of a guest Wi Fi network. And then like, you can have you, you I can need steal my, someone's I need my Wi-Fi. Yeah, like if you're by a Starbucks and you're swinging on the trees and living in the trees, then you can get the Starbucks Wi-Fi anywhere. Exactly. Complimentary. Like, you could just live on the house and be like, "Oh, I need Starbucks," <laughs> and swing down and be like, "Hi, I need a caramel frappuccino." Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but you'd have to make them sturdy enough so you don't like the branches and stuff, so you don't True. go. Wah! <laughs> True. 
Would you rather have a pet snail or a pet worm? FYI, snails eat worms. I would have a snail. Yeah, I think they're kind of cute. Yeah, I have snails outside. When it rains, the snails come out. But the worms, it's like you, at least the snail, you can see it because it has a shell. And the worm, you just end you up lose stepping it and you on. Go, ah, go. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, this, but I hate to admit it, caviar is pretty good, so. <laughs> I, I don't really like it. It's a little too salty. Too salty, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a an taste. acquired taste. It is. It is. It's, but I like seafood, so. <laughs> I like, uh, uh, I like salmon and like halibut and swordfish. I like yeah. white fish and salmon. Nice. Well, we sadly need to wrap up. Oh, but that was so know. fun. No. So can you remind people where they can go to find out more about you? Um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at the pitch queen, or you can go to the pitch queen dot com awesome go check her out and would you like to join me in the sign off yes all right remember kids we all have superpowers and we can change the we world. can change the world awesome thank you so much michelle <laughs> thank you neva have a great day thanks you too bye bye